a lot last night, but you know they always say a good sign of the team is is a team that doesn't bring the A game, but they're able to pull out a W. And I mean, short sure, certain times it was kind of ugly last night, but you know, confidence speaking, your guys were able to pull it out. Oh well, you know, welcome to the Big East. I mean, it, you know, uh, our fans should be used to that by now. It's one difference, major difference in our league. Every game's a battle, uh, and I think the layoff hurt us. We uh, our intensity, we weren't in game intensity. And uh, we, we got punched in the mouth the first 20 minutes, no doubt about it. But the mark of a good team uh, is to be able to make sure that uh, you dig in, do what you got to do, and, and get the win. To thoroughly outplay your opponent in the second half the way we did, you know, we got some winners in our locker room, you know, and it's uh, as a coach, you can talk about a lot about things that you need to do to dig in and win a game, but if you're, you don't have the guys uh, with the heart to do it, uh, you're in trouble. Uh, so that's a good thing about this team. That's why I've been high on our team all year because uh, we got some guys that will they'll dig deep when the time's right. Jackson's energy just fuels the team. Talk about how special he is to have somebody who can do so many things what he does, the presence that he has. Well, to block shots, uh, you know, the energy booster things. They're also saving baskets. You know, I know the you know everybody says, well, it brings great energy. It also eliminates two points. You know, those are all layups for the other team. Uh, aside from the, the offensive rebounds uh, and, uh, and the balls he saved a couple times going out of bounds. So, uh, you know, it's good to have him uh, playing at, at his best. And when he's at his best, he's doing that for us. Sean's really been hot lately. Is it is there anything different with him these last four games, or is it just when he makes shots, he's just as, you know. He's yeah, you know, I don't look at I don't really look at it the way you do. You know, I couldn't tell you if he's hot or cold. I'm yeah. worried about his game. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm concentrating on his defense and his decisions <clears throat> and trying to coach him through a game. And, w and the biggest thing when you're coaching a, uh, a score is to make sure he's not trying to do too much. You know, he started to panic in the first half and try to do too much for us. Took a couple of ill-advised shots, dribbled himself baseline and threw it backwards and turned it over. I called him over and said, you got to quit trying to do too much. Let the ball, the ball come to you. Your teammates will find you. And immediately he hit a three and the rest of the game he was fine. But I think that's a challenge for any. Uh, and, and when you're coaching a score or being a scorer, the balance of being aggressive but not trying to overdo it. Uh, and that's just the key with him, you know, and that's with all good players. You, you, you know, you got to you, you got to be aggressive, but at the same time, you can't you, you, if you try to do too much, it doesn't matter if you're a college player or a pro player. LeBron James, you know, you start trying to play against double teams and try to do too much. Uh, it, you're going to shoot a low percentage. You're going to hurt your team. You and Seton Hall have shot the most three pointers in the Big East. So should we expect a lot of three pointers on Saturday. <laughs> uh, I guess, I mean, if you look at the numbers, but, uh, you know, something about Big East this time of year, you know, numbers tend to go out the window. You know, every game tends to take on a life of its own, but it, it'll depend on how much zone they play. Um, you know, they change defenses a lot. They play man zone and matchup zone. So, uh, you know, we just try to play against the defense. Obviously, uh, we have some guys can really shoot, uh, and I have confidence in their, their ability to make shots, but uh, I think a lot would be dictated by the defense. You're um, the, the, the number of, number of three-point shots that you said, is that something you've done by design going into this year or something just the way it's worked out, the defense you face? No, we got two of the best shooters in the country in cash and SK, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, you know, that, if they get good open looks, you know, I don't even want to think about it. I want to shoot in the basketball. Uh, and, and, you know, at times, you know, I said, wow, well, you, you know, where they shoot a lot of threes. Well, if they're open, that's what we're going to do, especially those two guys. And, and Jaquan's, a, he, you know, he, he's... He, he's probably a better shooter than he gives himself credit for. You know, at times I think you know he knows he likes to attack the basket. Uh, I have to urge him to, to shoot some open shots at times. Same with Gilon and uh, and and uh, Jermaine Sanders at times. A lot of a lot of teams that rely on a three point shot have games where it's not there mm -hmm. and it costs them, it bites them. It hasn't really happened to you. Yeah, I think we we've done it. We, we're the biggest thing in Big East play. We've shot an enormously. Uh, greater amount of free throws versus our opponent than we have in recent history. And if that can continue, I think we got a chance to play for the championship. I really do. If that continues, I mean, for us to keep shooting 29 and our opponent shoots 10 or 11. It's just in the Big East games you're talking about? Yeah. If you look at our Big East statistics, we've really gotten to the foul line more. So, you know, statistically, your best shot's a layup. Second best shot is a free throw. Your third best shot's a three-point shot. You know, it, between five feet and 21 feet, you lump all those in, you're going to shoot 35%, and they always count for two. So we want to get layups, free throws, and shoot the open three. So your third, is the three-point shot the third best because 
Obviously, if, it's no, obviously no, if it, because it's less contested. But no, it, it's got to be open. Yeah. yeah, but that's what I mean. Most of if them it's less, are if, open. well, yeah, it depends. I mean, you can't you can't shoot bad ones. I mean, it, you know, theoretically, you would be open at the three point line because you're putting pressure on the rim and people are helping. Uh, and I think that's where our offense has improved since the, the beginning of the year, since probably the New Mexico game. <coughs> I, I, in my opinion, we've gotten to the foul line more. We'll put more pressure on the rim. When we do that. SK, if you just look at the Syracuse game, when we got the ball inside, that's when we started making shots outside. If you just look to shoot outside, it's going to be contested. So you got to have a balance. Uh, it, you know, it's the it's the 17 footer that you really it makes no sense to shoot unless it's late in the clock. You're talking about improvement in early in the season. You know, you always point us to later in the year to February. Now that the calendar is about to turn to February, you know, is this team on that track, I know you deal with injuries and things like yeah, that. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, that, that that number one thing when you get to February is trying to make sure you're healthy. Eh? A, yeah. um, you know, getting Cash back to where his legs are back is going to be big for us. You know, he he uh, he didn't. He took so many days off that uh, his game legs are nowhere near uh, where they need to be, and his mental state still improving back from the injury as well. Uh, but you got to make adjustments as the year goes on, and I think we've the guys have have been able to take a lot of the adjustments that we've made on the offensive end uh, and make us a better team uh, without forgetting who we are on defense. And uh, that's the biggest thing. You know, everybody's got skill level. You got to be tough enough to get the job done. And I, I think that uh, that being said, you know, we got some guys that know how to win. They're tough at, the, at winning time. I still would say for us to continue to improve, to follow up on that would be we need to get our guys off the bench. So I look at us with six starters. When I say off the bench, I'm talking Big Dave, Gilon, Jermaine, Shaq, and Kelvin, those guys. Those guys can have to continue to develop. And so where our depth is relative to who we're playing, we can do it no matter what. Uh, and, and we can get 10, 11 guys in there on scholarship uh, and maintain an intensity level uh, and, and try to wear teams down. So I think a lot of teams this time of year tend to slow down. Where the one thing we're trying to work on in practice is speeding up. If you saw us in the second half against Rutgers, our fast break got going. Uh, you know, we're, 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 our focus now is it starts trying to make sure we, we don't slow down. We try to speed up on offense and try to, you know, wear people down and use our athletes. Talk about adjustments on offense. Making adjustments offensively as the season's gone on. How much of that is personal related and how much of that is staying ahead of the scouting report. So oh, it's that both. You know, it's both. And, you, you know, you have some things that you'd like to work on, you know, that you think are going to work. Uh, and then due to your personnel and how people are playing against you. You know, one thing about the, our, uh, our spread motion that was hurting us early in the year was people just denying SK and cash and go ahead and see if your other guys can beat us. You know, that's strategically not a great thing for us. We need to make sure those guys are involved in our offense. So you see us run a lot more screening, a lot more pick and roll to make sure that we're able to keep the ball in those guys' hands as much as possible because obviously they're, you know, they're our initiators on offense, and we're better when they got the ball in their hands. And we can, the other guys are better at finishing. So, uh, it, it, you know, there's still times where we can do it, but uh, you got to make the adjustments to make sure that your best players are the, the guys the other team's having to play defense against. Where do you play Seton Hall is your biggest concern in their three-point shooting? Look at them uh, my biggest concern is their coaching. A. Uh, they're extremely well coached, um, and their strategy is always going to give them a chance to win defensively. Uh, on offense, uh, A for me would be their inside, Eugene Teague. He, he can really score. He's capable of putting up 25 on you. And if he gets it going, then it becomes B, the outside game. Um, you know, so if for us, it's uh, you know making sure we don't let him go crazy, and then we have to start double teaming him and start playing horse on the outside. You know, and they're a team that they've struggled here recently uh, with taking care of the basketball. But obviously, that was a road game last night against St. John. Uh, Has that been their biggest problem? They lost yeah. six out of seven. Take care of the ball. Yeah, they're uh, in Big East play. They're almost, or uh, maybe even overall, they're almost 16 turnovers a game, which is pretty high. You know, I, and I don't know where their Big East numbers are off top of my head, but they're struggling to take care of the ball. Must be looking for Thompson. Uh, we're on the road. Uh, well, only thing I'm licking my chops for is some Italian food on <laughs> Friday night in New Jersey. <laughs> they, got, they got a dinosaur in New York. 
If you if you go to New York, New, you know New York area. I trust me, I can recommend restaurants. <laughs> I can I can tell you where to recruit, and I can tell you where to eat. Other other than that, I'm not really good in the New York area, but I can tell you where to eat, where to recruit. Hey, Mick, uh, obviously you guys are tipping off early. I know you're not a big fan of those really tips. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah I, I, does it change your approach, your, your preparation? Oh, yeah, I mean, what, yeah. what, 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 how much does it change? You got to change a lot of things. You know, you you know, you got to make sure that uh, you got guys, you know, you got guys up, and you you know, try to turn it into a positive for the guys. Say, hey, look, we don't have to wait around to play. Let's get up, let's get something to eat, and go play. Uh, get a win, and we got the rest of the day. That you know, we'll be back home in Cincinnati by four o'clock, five o'clock. So uh, you got to try to sell your guys on the good part of it. Yeah. Uh, and that way, you almost get I, you're going to get almost two days off. You, know, you get Saturday and Sunday off. We just got to get the win. So. Uh, it, 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 you know, TV dictates everything, guys. It's all about money, and you know, and players get none of it. It's begun to get completely ridiculous with conference realignment and playing games at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. It's all about television. What time do you get them up? To? Probably 7:30. Probably, we'll probably eat breakfast at 7:30. I think it's what. I'm not smart enough to. Uh, dictate things like that. I talked to Bob Mangine and Mike Lafo, my strength and conditioning and trainer guys, and they're a lot smarter than me. So when it comes to those... Th you say everybody's not smarter yeah. than you. Yeah. Are you smarter than anybody besides me? Me. <laughs> <laughs> are, hey, are you smarter than a fifth grader? I'm not smarter than a, I'm not smarter than a six-year-old. I get outsmarted every morning. Uh, every time she asks for a snack, somehow I get outsmarted. <laughs> I don't have